I am not merely interested in creating a world where everyone feels free. I'm interested in cultivating individuals who can figure out how to be free in any kind of society. You get the inner aspect of freedom right. You will fight for freedom no matter what the outer conditions are. But if you only get the outer aspects of freedom right without the inner part, you will give up that freedom in a day for the first person who comes along and promises you a free goodie. So I'm all about the cultivation of inner freedom. That's what TK's Two Cents is all about. I riff on different topics pertaining to how to be the predominant creative force in your own life as an individual. This isn't about society. This is about that part of society that we call you, the individual. How are you taking charge of your life rather than how are you attempting to use someone else's power in order to force somebody else to take charge of their life and all of that, the, the kinds of battles that people love to hide behind. We're going to talk about the individual and what we can do. So let's dive right in to tweet number one. Today's topic is how to not lose your soul. All right. Selling your soul isn't about the type of job you have. It's about the type of mindset you have. You can sell your soul in any career if you're not being true to your own idea of greatness. I had a friend back when I was in college who was a jazz musician. When this guy played the guitar, it was like no other. He had a full-time scholarship for the music department. Well, one summer, he watches a movie called Contact, which is a science fiction movie based on a novel by Carl Sagan. If you never heard of Carl Sagan, I encourage you to look him up. He is without a debate, one of the greatest popularizers of scientific literacy of all time. Carl Sagan had a way of talking about the universe in a way that made it seem magical without relying on magical explanations. My friend watched that movie and he loved it so much that he decided he was gonna read the book that it was based on. He loved that so much, he went tumbling down a rabbit hole of Carl Sagan books and spent an entire summer just reading about science. He fell so deeply in love with science that he left his scholarship behind, changed universities so that he could go somewhere and study astrophysics. A jazz musician who left music to go study astrophysics. He ended up graduating with a degree in physics. And I remember at that time, there were some murmurings. There were some people that were like, I don't get it. Like the dude was a musician, had a music scholarship. He was like good at the guitar. Why did he leave music to go study physics? And I think the trouble that some people had understanding his choice at that time is a good illustration of the conditioning that we often have around what it means to follow a dream versus what it means to be a sellout. When many people think about being a sellout, they have some stereotype in their minds and it's usually reducible to their own personal idea of the kind of job that they would hate working at. So for many people, working at corporate America would be a sellout job. Working in a bank and finance, that would be a sellout job. Sitting at a desk would be a sellout job. And maybe the stereotype for a dream job would be maybe being a professional athlete or a professional artist. And there are great dangers to thinking about passion and selling out as if it's about the profession rather than about the person. The truth of the matter is a sellout is someone who abandons their preferences, their priorities, and their principles in order to live a life that is safe, in order to live a life that is free from criticism, or in order to live a life that other people will praise. And you can find sellouts, not based on what I think of their lives, but based on how they abandon their own conscience. You can find sellouts in every field. You can even find sellouts in religion. You can find sellouts in careers where there isn't a lot of money. You can find sellouts in the arts. Everywhere in the world, in every demographic, there are people who neglect the inner call of their soul every day. There are people who sear their conscience every day and they live underneath the tyranny of other people's demands and expectations. And deep down inside, they are miserable, even though they may be praised for being a religious person, a spiritual person, an artistic person, a person without a lot of money, a person with a lot of money. It's not about your job. It's not about your income. There are sellouts at every level of life. 
The person who wins at the game of life, the person whose soul is saved is the person who places personal integrity above everything else. It doesn't really matter if you go from being a jazz musician to being a physicist, or if you go from being a physicist to being a jazz musician, what matters is that you are moving in the direction of self authenticity. So if you're thinking about your life and your career, and you're afraid of being a sellout, please don't make the mistake of thinking that you're safe for avoiding that mortgage broker position that your dad does. And oh my gosh, you don't ever wanna be like your dad, do you? Don't think you're safe just because you avoid whatever stereotype there is in your mind of a sellout job. You are only safe when you are respecting your potential, when you are respecting your purpose enough to boldly confront the possibilities of who you were born to be. You're true to that, you won't be a sellout. You lie to yourself about that, I don't care about your income, how big, how little it is. I don't care about how spiritual sounding your job is. You are selling yourself short. Please don't sell yourself short. You deserve better. Let's go to tweet number two. If winning makes you think that you have nothing new to learn, it becomes just a more subtle form of losing. I love winning. I think winning is a beautiful thing. And for those of you who might be ready to pounce on that word and say, hey, it's not all about winning and competition and life is about being present in the available in the present moment and all that kind of stuff. I agree with all of that spiritual talk. I love that kind of talk myself. But don't forget, games are a part of life. Play is a part of life. And winning is more than just accumulating all the chips and accumulating all the money. Winning can also be a term that is used to talk about the experience of creating the kinds of results and sensations and outcomes and experiences that matter most to you. And so winning could just be having a Saturday night where you're not hanging out with a bunch of people and you're sitting on your couch with your feet propped up reading a novel. That could be winning to you. So winning is just a part of life. And winning is a wonderful thing, but winning is also tricky because winning can kind of seduce us into thinking that the reason we won is because we did everything right or because we're so magnificent and we're so great. You see, when you lose, losing can be so painful that it incentivizes you to analyze things and ask questions about things. When you lose, you wanna go, well, what happened? Why did we make that turnover? Why did we get that wrong? Where, where did we make a mistake? Whose fault is it? And sometimes we do a little too much of that, but typically when we lose, we are highly motivated to learn because we feel that visceral sensation of regret and pain. But when we win, it feels so good, we might risk forgetting how close we came to losing because of some mistakes that need to be fixed, because of some oversights that need to be zoomed in on and taken care of. Sometimes we win because the conditions were favorable, Sometimes we win because the other pe person didn't show up and do their job. Sometimes we win because there were just a number of random factors coming together. And it is so important, so important to resist the temptation to sit back and relax after a victory and just assume, oh yeah, all I gotta do is show up now. All I gotta do is show up and the same thing is gonna keep happening. Just as losing isn't guaranteed to repeat into your future, neither is winning. It's all based on how you learn from your past experiences. You wanna know what my definition of losing is? For me, losing begins when learning stops. Don't ever stop learning because even if you won your last battle, the moment that you stop learning, that battle is going, that victory is going to be short-lived and it won't repeat into the future. Be a winner and that's not measured by your income or your status. It's measured by your commitment to learning. Hey, y'all, that's how you win at life. And that's how you avoid the trap of losing your soul. If you enjoy this episode, please click like, please subscribe, please leave a comment letting me know what you thought or asking any questions or making any requests about topics you'd love to hear me talk about in the future. And please share with a family member or a friend if you think it might be valuable to them. Take it easy, y'all. Create a great day. Peace.